Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Build Your Copywriting Business Podcast. Hey there, Kate. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, and actually, uh, today's podcast topic is, I don't know why I'm saying and actually, but today's podcast topic uh, is inspired by a post that we made on our Instagram channel, probably also Facebook. Yeah. Um, just a good reminder that if you are not following us on Instagram and or well, both Facebook, um, do so because we're constantly putting up new and valuable content. But my point being is that um, today's episode is inspired by a post that got a lot of uh, a lot of great reactions, and um, this podcast was episode is going to give us the opportunity to dig into it just a little bit deeper. So, Kate, what was the gist of that post? Yeah, it was a lot of people saying, ooh, you're calling me out, so buckle up and get ready to be called out today. <laughs> but the gist of it was talking about kind of the the really the number one, we're calling it the number one secret for new copywriters, but also seasoned copywriters. It's kind of the number one secret to getting stuff done um, because it's, it's how to keep your focus and avoid all the distractions that are going to come up as you're starting, especially as you're starting out copywriting for the first time, you're going to get tons of new information. I think most of us, if not like 99.9% .9 of us don't come from a marketing background. So once you dig into copywriting, all of a sudden you're getting all of this new information about marketing and about design and about um, SEO and about development and all of these things that kind of are related to copywriting, people you might work with as a copywriter, but entirely different careers. And then it's very, very easy to start suddenly thinking like, well, I have to learn this too. And I have to learn this too. And I have to be a one-stop shop. And then I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. And it's the seriously number one thing that we see kind of derailing students from becoming working successful copywriters because they spend so, so, so very much time going down all of these rabbit holes, which we are all for learning and continuing learning. Don't get us wrong. Uh, but if your goal is to establish yourself as a copywriter, then you need to focus on copywriting. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll hear the, oh, I wonder if I should, maybe I should be learning design too. You start learning copy or anything. Oh, if I learn design too, then I could also be, and um, oh, also maybe if I learned SEO and then I could add them to content writing and then I could offer content writing and then, oh, but if I also want to do copy editing, I should build a separate website for that. So maybe mm -hmm. I should be building a separate website. And it is, it's all very exciting. And here's the thing that I can tell you as uh, as people who are, because not everyone will do this. Not everyone will take the step to create a new career. Um, if you're listening to this, you are that kind of person. You are someone who wants to achieve more things in your life. And that is amazing and wonderful. And that is not everyone by any means. Um, but also part of that is that when you are someone who wants to achieve things, you start to see all of the possibilities. And when you start to see all of the possibilities, things can get um, a little bit overwhelming and it can start to feel like, oh my gosh, I have to do all of this now. But the one thing that I will tell you that will slow down and if not completely stop your process, and this is not just for copywriters. This is yeah. also the, the advice that I give to, uh, to the, the digital business owners that I teach and that I coach. It's Working on more than one project at the same time just slows down progress on all of them. And I can absolutely tell you that I am guilty of that. I start working on one thing and I think, oh, gosh, all right, this is this is great. Let me also start working on the same thing at the same time. But it reminds me of when I used to work um, – used to work in-house at a company and it was, we had one creative team, you know, a couple of designers, but one copywriter at that time, which was me. And, you know, we'd have meetings with the, with the marketing team and they'd say, okay, we have these projects and they're all really important. Um, and so these projects all have to happen at the same time. We're going to, we're going to work on it on parallel paths. So like both of these projects going to happen at the same time. And I just remember being in these meetings laughing at, you know, not, laughing in a respectful way before calling this out and saying, you can't work on parallel paths if you have the same people working on it. They can't simultaneously be doing two different things. And I think that as we think about our own potential and we get so excited and there's so many things that we want to do, we, and I believe me, again, I have done this to myself multiple times in my career and have regretted it each time. When we try to do parallel projects for ourselves, it's the same thing. We can't 
be walking on two separate paths at the same time. And even jumping in between two very different paths, it's just ends up slowing everything down. Instead of giving your, your, um, goal to become a working copywriter, instead of giving that 100% and all of your focus, if you start then also thinking, all right, well, oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm also going to get, um, get training in design. I'm going to learn to become a designer. What that does is it slows everything down. It slows your copywriting progress down. It slows your design progress down. Any way that you're splitting your focus aside from the focused goal of becoming a paid copywriter because that's the goal right it's if if it's not uh if you're not getting paid for it it's just an expensive hobby anything that you do that's taking your taste splitting your focus away from that is just going to slow you down from achieving your goal and unfortunately when we start noticing that slowdown we can get dissuaded we can get discouraged and unfortunately some people can then decide to stop yeah, it becomes way too overwhelming. It's like, how could I possibly do all of this? And this is going to take me so much time. Yeah, it is going to take you so much time. And if not being impossible, because there's there again, you're at that point trying to learn two, three, four different careers all at once instead of one career. Um, they're an entire their entire agencies built with you know individuals that fill all of these roles. How how can one person fill all of these roles? And on top of that, do them all in a way that is done well, that is done quality work that your clients are going to want to come back to you for all of these things. It is very, very, very rare, as we will link to the episode, um, to have someone who's equally good at copywriting and design. Is it possible? Yes. Um, but it, it's they're two totally separate careers. And so it it's unnecessary. I think where this comes from is that a lot of people think, well, if I do this and I can offer this and I can offer this, then I can charge my clients just way, way more. And, and, and they don't have to go to anyone else and, and they'll, they'll actually want to work with me and it'll be more likely that I can have more clients. So the, the thinking behind it is I understand it. It, it makes sense of, Hey, if I do all of this, then I'll have more clients, more money, more income. Um, but that's not actually the case. Uh, you, clients are totally fine hiring an expert in copywriting and an expert in design and expert in development. Uh, often clients who are savvy know that it's almost impossible to find someone who fits all of these roles and does them equally well. Um, and so they're happy to work and hire an expert who knows the ins and outs of their craft very, very, very well. And so if you're feeling that, know that you you don't need to. It should be a relief, I hope, that, that what we're saying is that whatever your income goal, you can create that being a copywriter. Now, at a certain point for pe- copywriters who have been doing this for a long time, you're going to face the same thing if once you're at the stage of thinking, well, okay, I hit... I hit this goal. Should I should I form an agency? Should I maybe I'll start an email list and maybe I'll I'll offer you know one to many services and I'll somehow you know um, build a digital product or maybe I will uh, really lean into social media and try to get you know monetize that somehow. And there are all these possible paths and you realize all the opportunity, which is really cool and exciting. Of oh my gosh, I have just a world of of things that I could possibly do. And I think for for everyone, really, it's at this stage, it, whether you're just starting out or you're at the kind of stage of what's next for my copywriting career, is to to take a step back and say, what what is my actual goal? And so if you're just starting out, if it's, I want to get my first client, I haven't even landed my, like, then that's that's what you should laser focus in. And if your goal is to to grow your copywriting business, I hit this stage too, where I was like, well, I guess... I guess I need to start an agency now because I hit, you know, multiple six figures. Okay, how do how do I scale beyond that? And then I sat and thought about it and I was thought, you know, I've been very very not far down this path and thought, "Oh, I don't actually have any desire to do that." And so I think uh it's very easy to feel like we have to do some certain things, like, "Oh, of course I have to do that. I see someone else offering all of these things. So I have to offer all of these things, right? This is the natural career path. So I have to go down that that path. When there's as many paths as there are people in this career, and you can make of it what you want. So I think really taking stock of what is your goal? Is it to earn more income? Is it to have more time? Is it to maintain that same level of income, but be able to take 10 weeks of vacation? Or what what is your actual desire and what are the possible ways to get there? Because I think we we stop thinking about what we actually want and the different ways to get there and that there isn't necessarily just one 
one way to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think too, if if you're listening to this and you're going, well, I know I don't need to, but I want to, you know, if you're mm-hmm. you're digging, you're going down the copywriting path and you're like, oh, I, but I want to learn about design. That's mm-hmm. perfectly fine. We're not at all saying that you shouldn't do things for fun. But the tricky thing comes in when you start devoting more of your time and your focus to the things that are fun, often because they are fresh and new and they're not you're you're kind of dabbling them and you're playing in them and they're not maybe taking you outside of your comfort zone the way that pursuing your copywriting goal does the the kind of the fun things it's very easy to then justify well but yeah but i i but if i put as much time into the design as i do into and again this is just an example but if I put as much time into design, which is really fun for me right now, just learning is really fun, then eventually I'll be able to make so much more. But it's, it's, it is a, it's a distraction. And it's, you know, we always talk about, we always talk about resistance and we talk about how insidious resistance is. And sometimes these, these side pursuits can be a manifestation of that resistance. Once you start getting to a point in your copywriting career, when you maybe need to start getting out of your comfort zone, maybe you need to start reaching out to designers or you need to set your portfolio live, or you need to send your first pitch or, or increase your, your pitching, um, uh, pitching time, volume. pitching ratio, number, yeah. volume. Thank you. That is the correct word. Uh, that is often when um, any anything that pushes you out of your comfort zone. That's when your when your your mind starts kicking up that resistance. That oh, but you could do this as well. And again, if you want to do that, that's great. But treat it like a hobby. Spend mm-hmm. the vast majority of your time pursuing the tasks that are going to get you to your goal in copywriting. And then, you know, maybe a couple hours on the weekend, the way that you would treat a hobby, do these other things. Um, because the, 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 the simple fact of the matter is, is that especially with copywriting and CCA students, you know it, you have the exact steps to follow. Now, it's true that once you get into the middle, as you start building out your portfolio and pitching and, and the, the, it's a little bit less linear in there, but because it's all geared toward the same goal, you can spend a couple hours in the morning working on your portfolio, spend a couple hours reaching out to find designers, spend a couple hours pitching. You can do that all in one day because it's all geared toward the same goal. But when you are starting to pick up other things that are And I understand it's very easy to justify, well, but yeah, but if I add design, then, um, then I'm going to make more money. And that's like an even further goal. I get it. I, I understand. But, but even, I think even if you were saying that out loud to yourself, if you said it out loud to someone else, you'd be like, oh yeah, that does kind of sound like resistance. If your goal is to be a paid copywriter, paid copywriter, anything that is distracting you from that is just going to slow you down from achieving that goal. Yeah. And we always talk about putting things on your calendar. And I think that's obviously part of it, scheduling out your day to say, you know, I think Nikki's example is great of, okay, maybe from nine to 10, I'm going to add companies to my pitch list. Maybe it takes longer than that. I don't know. Bear with me with these times. <laughs> from 10 to 12, I'm going to uh, work on my portfolio. I'm going to you know, add pieces that I have, spec pieces, uh, whatever it is, and breaking out your day like that. But I think the, the other thing is to be very conscious of what you're adding to your calendar uh, to say, is this going to move me a step closer to my goal? Or is it going to actually take me a sidestep? Or is it a step back? Or is it not even a step? Is it, you know, I always think about like logos or business cards where you're like, yeah, but I'm a copywriter and this is for my copywriting business. Is that going to land you clients? Mm -hmm. If you haven't landed any clients or you need more clients or uh, more projects coming down the pipe, if that, if that's, that's the goal to, you know, have, have income coming in, then what are the tasks that are going to get you to have clients and additional clients. It's it's repitching old clients. It's pitching new clients. It's adding companies to your pitch list. It's, you know, researching an idea to add to your pitch. It's all of those things that might not be the most fun, um, but make them fun then. You know, like I, I think we we put so much pressure on each of these phases. So if you break them up, I think it's a lot more fun to say, I'm just I have the freedom to look around and say, what companies do I want to add to my pitch list? What companies would be super cool to work for? 
And there's no pressure of, oh, I have to pitch them right now or even today or tomorrow or a week from now. It's just adding companies to your pitch list. So making that fun. When you're writing the pitch, you don't have to send it that day to say, okay, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to work on subject lines for this. And, and maybe that's all you do that day. Uh, and then you write the pitch the next day and then you sleep on it and then you come back and you revise it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think lowering the pressure on all of it to make it slightly more enjoyable versus that feeling of like that forced feeling of I have to do this. Well, yeah, you have to do this if you want to land clients, but it doesn't have to feel you can it doesn't have to feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think too that that as we get into building our business, um, taking the daily steps, um, a lot of the the excitement, the newness of like, oh, I'm in a new career. Oh, I'm learning a totally new thing. That kind of wears off a little bit. And sometimes we can try to pursue other things to bring back that feeling of newness mm-hmm. and excitement and learning something new. And I'm, again, I'm not at all saying that that's a bad thing, but just do it judiciously. I was talking to a student um, who uh, is fantastic, like, smart woman, very just fantastic in general. And she was saying, I was thinking, um, you know, definitely building up my business and, and, but I also, I was thinking I want to start a podcast and I could start mm-hmm. a podcast and then I could, could do this podcast. And then I was thinking the podcast would drive people into a funnel and then the funnel would, um, potentially convert people into clients. So, you, so like, what does it take to start a podcast and, and would you recommend it? And, and I said, first of all, podcast, clearly we love podcasting. Podcasting is awesome. But number one, Podcasting takes a lot of work. It is not just getting online and uh, and recording something. There are a whole there are a whole host of elements to it, which we won't get into here. But it, it takes a lot of work. On top, need to say, fact, Nikki and I wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have a whole team yes. behind the podcast. <laughs> You're not very tech savvy. Yeah, I was very close to not following through anyway. Um, <laughs> but there's a, there's a whole lot to it. On top of the fact that. If your plan um, is to to start a podcast and to get people into your funnel, first of all, you need to build out a funnel. Second of all, you need to spend time then promoting the podcast, right? You, you, you're you not just going to release a podcast and automatically have people that are clamoring to listen to it. Then you're going to have to record the podcast and also spend time promoting it, which all of this is a dotted line because people who listen may get into your funnel and then people may decide to follow, uh, decide to to work with you. But all of that decreases. So I, I said to her, um, not at all a bad idea to start a podcast, but before you get into it, know what you are doing, know how much time this is going to take away from your pitching activities, which we say a lot. Pitching is a direct line to clients. Pitching and repitching previous, that's a direct line. Everything else while useful. There are no other direct lines. Yeah. There are no other direct lines. Everything else while useful, you know, posting on social media, um, um, asking for referrals, uh, starting a podcast, all of these are great, but they are, they are dotted lines to clients. Mm-hmm. There's no guarantee that you're going to get clients that way. Um, so focus on what you know is going to work and then do the rest in, in your your free time or or I should say a lot a small amount of time and don't let yourself get over the cuz it's again when something is fresh and new it's, it's shiny object syndrome right when something is fresh and new and exciting we want to spend so much more time on the fresh and new and exciting stuff at the expense of the stuff that is going to actually build our careers and this is not at all just like I said earlier, not at all a copywriter thing. This is something that I talk to um, my my the the business owners that that I teach and coach, and we're talking multi multi six figures into seven figures. It's all when we're working in the same thing. It's always tempting to go, oh, but what if I also mm-hmm. started this? But the more projects we have, the more we slow down our success in in everything. Yeah. I feel like that's why there's phrases like eyes on the prize, because it's so easy to take your eyes off the prize and, and yeah. get distracted by what it seems like a, another, you know, prize, if you will, but isn't actually what you ultimately want. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And if you're listening and you're thinking, all right, well, but people do start podcasts and people do start agencies and people. So are you telling me I should not at all no. saying that you should never do that by any means. However, you just may want to change the time frame instead of 
trying to add a podcast or add a specialty or add uh, or start an agency while you are in the middle of growing a successful copywriting business, you need to make sure that your copywriting business is successful, that you are chugging along just fine, that you can manage all your clients, that you are pitching regularly and that pitching has become fast for you. Uh, you need to make sure that you have your boundaries in place and you have boundaries with clients, your own personal yourself, time boundaries. Yeah. Exactly. You need to make sure that all of that is in a really good place before you can add anything else. Because if you try to add something and that is not in a good place, it's going to derail everything. And the, the, how, how am I going to know when it's a good place? You may not, you may have to kind of test it out. You may have to say, all right, well, I tried to do something else and, oh, it totally distracted me from, oh, I re I started doing this and I realized I haven't sent a pitch out in two weeks, which as we all know is a dangerous place to be. But it's only once you get to the point that, that your business is chugging along that you can even think about adding something in addition to it. Yeah. That timeline is going to be different for everyone because I know the question is like, how long will that take? It's just like how long it takes you to become a copywriter. It, everyone's goals are different. If your goal is to be a part-time copywriter working 10 hours a week, making $30,000 a year, or maybe your goal is to work 25 hours per week making $100,000 a year or what, 40 hours a week, you want to work full time and make whatever. There's just, it, it's all individual. And so really taking time to sit with your goals and what are your goals? Because I think too often too, we go into this without having any, any nailed down goals. And then it's like, what, what are we chasing then? If we don't know what the end state is, then it's extra easy to get distracted and, and derailed by, by anything. So we're not at all saying don't pursue things that interest you. Certainly, if you're like, ooh, I think I'd like to learn design or I'd like to learn about SEO and then I can start offering content or, or I'd, like to, I'd like to see what it would take to eventually start an Absolutely, very cool. Pursue different things. However, you need to keep a very careful eye on your time, your energy, and your attention to make sure that this, ooh, pursuing something new is not actually just resistance coming up and going, oh, look at the shiny object that's going to distract you and keep you from getting out of your comfort zone and actually making progress in your copywriting career. So certainly pursue new things, look at your interests. You know, we, we hear the term, at least in digital businesses, I'm multi-passionate. I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. That's great. I'm a multi-passionate business owner. Super, be multi-passionate. However, you cannot give 100% of yourself to everything. So decide what goal is going to get 95% of your professional self and then figure out what, what additional interests or whatever is going to get that 5% or that 10%, whatever. The, but just make sure that the majority of your time and your effort is heading toward your goals, is going to take you toward where you want to go. And then when that is chugging along, when you are hitting your goals consistently, when you are, you are on point with your client boundaries and your personal boundaries, and you can sit down and write a pitch and knock it out in five or 10 minutes, and you send them regularly without even thinking, not without even thinking about it, put some thought into it, but you know what I'm saying. When you get to that point, then you can evaluate, okay, what do I want? Do I want to add anything in? Or do I want to hire an assistant and take some things out? How do I want to evolve my business? But until you get to that point where you are <laughs> just chugging along, I think is the, the you know, because trains are so common now in 2023. Um, but, <laughs> but steam get, engine, steam engine, a new, uh, new innovation. Um, but until you get to that point that you are, that you are chugging along and you're seeing that consistent success and you've got that revenue, you've got, and you're paying all, your bills. Yeah. And you're paying your bills <laughs> and you have all of your systems dialed in until that, until you, that point, you are going to do yourself and your business a major disservice by trying to add in anything else on top of it. Yeah. Put a, put a post-it note on your computer. Is this moving me toward my goal? And ask that. yourself that for everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Okay. So a little bit of tough love, but uh, the emphasis as always is on the love part. Um, if this was something that you needed to hear, let us know. You know that we're always, uh, always aiming to give you the information and the insight and of course also the inspiration that, um, that resonates most with you. Um, but I, we can both tell you after 
many, many years in both the copywriting business and just business in general. It's it's focus. There's um, wow, I'm gonna get the story wrong, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell it anyway. Oh, I'm ready. There's this, Right. There's some popcorn. Um, it gets repeated again and again. So who knows how valid it is, but it, it rings true. There was some event where Bill Gates and Steve Jobs were both at an event and they said, what is the then they said, all right, write your answer down on a piece of paper because don't say it out loud. Write your answer down on a piece of paper. For, and, and what is the number one key to success? And they both wrote down a piece of paper and they both mm-hmm. separately, of course, they both flipped it over. And that answer was focus. Hmm. So if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't know, I don't believe you, Nikki. I don't believe you, Kate. Perhaps. You uh, believe this. Yeah, maybe, Bill and Steve. <laughs> maybe Bill and Steve have a little insight that's that's worth considering. So, again, take that for what it's worth. And this, in full disclosure, has been a story that has been repeated to me multiple times. So I'm not going to cite my cite my sources. Do we want to fact check it? <laughs> Let's live, not live fact, fact check, check it. Actually, <laughs> um, but uh, the point being that uh, that it that it rings true, doesn't it? It's you could see why. Well, we talk a lot, a lot about too about uh, consistency and persistence, and I feel like that kind of falls into focus. If you're focused, then you're having that consistency and persistence. Versus, mm-hmm. you think the second you're distracted and unfocused, persistence goes out the window because you're pursuing something completely different. So, yeah, that's a great point. A great point. Yes. Yeah, so, so consistency, persistence focus, friends, because your goal, whatever your goal is, is completely possible, but it's not possible. You'll never get there if you don't focus on the actual pursuit of it. So that's what we have for you for today. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Like what you heard? Hit subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're ready to take the first step toward becoming a copywriter yourself, Sign up for a free video training right here.